Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Brian Kohlberger's warrant became unsealed, so I'm going to read it for you guys. It's pretty interesting. I'm going to go through it and probably read most of it, but I might skip some parts, but at least I'll be scrolling through. So if it's a part maybe that you want to see, you could always screenshot it, you know. So let me make this a little bit bigger. But I didn't do nothing. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not working. Oh, shoot. Okay. All right, that should be good. Okay. So, January 17th, 2023 is when it was filed, which is yesterday. Two days ago. Sorry, I'm a day off. Okay. So, I'm going to skip this right here. It's just in order to unseal the warrant. It says, Those, these warrants were issued and served in Washington State because a suspect in the crimes resided and worked here during the time of the murders. These warrants and associated applications were sealed due to the sensitive nature of the investigation at that time. Since then, an extensive probable cause affidavit has been unsealed in Lataw County, Idaho, which has alleviated the need for sealing of the return of service here in Washington. So it's basically hereby unsealed. Okay. Motion. Comes now, the state of Washington, by and through Dennis Tracy, Whitman County prosecuting attorney, and moves the court for an order to keep sealed the search warrant and search warrant application number SWNO, blah, 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 but to allow the state to file redacted versions, which replace the victim witnesses' names with initials pursuant to GR 15. Okay, the Washington State Constitution recognizes that victims of crimes have rights and states that effective law enforcement depends on cooperation from victims of crime. The Washington State Legislature has recognized that there is a severe and detrimental impact on crimes victims, survivors of victims, and witnesses of crime, and, and yet there is the civic and moral duty of victims, survivors of victims, and witnesses of crimes to fully and voluntarily cooperate with law enforcement and prosecutorial agencies. In a criminal proceeding, the law requires that a reasonable effort is made to ensure that victims, survivors of victims, and witnesses of crimes have the right to re receive protection from harm and threats of harm arising out of cooperation with law enforcement and prosecution efforts. Washington courts have long acknowledged that a victim's initials can be substituted for their name. The basis for this motion is that there are two surviving victims, witnesses of a now notorious and much publicized murder, burglary in Moscow, Idaho, whose full names are listed in this search warrant and search warrant application. These warrants were issued and served in Washington state because a suspect in the crimes resided and worked here during the time of the murders. These warrants and associated applications were sealed due to the sensitive nature of the investigation at that time. Since then, an extensive probable cause affidavit has been unsealed in Lataw County, Idaho, which has alleviated much of the need for sealing here in Washington. But the documents filed in Lataw County have not disclosed the surviving victims' names, only their initials. These victims should have the level of protection that can be provided by having their initials substituted for the full names in the search warrants and search warrants applications, which became publicly available from this court. The state is asking the court to consider the usual factors showing the need for the sealing records and where the need is based on a right other than accused rights to a fair trial. A serious and imminent threat to that right, anyone presented when a motion is made must be given an opportunity to object to that closure. The proposed method for curtailing open access must be the least restrictive means available for protecting the threatened interests. The court must weigh the competing interests of the proponent of closure in the public and the order must be no broader in this application or duration than necessary to serve its purpose. The state contends that the need to protect victim identification is important to their safety, health, and well-being, and that victims and witnesses' rights should be protected vigorously, just as the legislature and the state founders intended. The proposed method is to file a complete search warrant and application for warrant with only surviving victims' names redacted and replaced with initials. This is a very minor closure of a court document in order to protect a very important victim interest. Finally, the order will be no broader in application than necessary to serve its purpose, and the public will still have the pertinent information at its disposal in order to understand the proceedings of the court. Upon the sworn complaint made before me, there is a probable cause to believe that the crimes of the murder in the first degree and burglary per Idaho Code has been committed in Idaho, and that the evidence of that, those crime, or contraband, the fruits of crime, or things otherwise criminally possessed, or weapons or other things by means of which a crime has been committed or reasonably appears about to be committed, is concealed in or on certain premises. In making this determination, this court did not consider the information in the supplemental disclosure, read DNA test as evidence in supporting the existence of probable cause. This court also does not consider the information in that supplemental disclosure to be exculpatory. 
You are commanded to search within 10 days of this date. The premises described as follows. Apartment located at 1630 Northeast Valley Road, number G201, Pullman, Washington. 1630 Northeast Valley Road is a three-story, multiple occupancy apartment building in Pullman, Washington, which is a tan and white in color. Apartment G201 is located on the northeast corner of the second story of this building. The door is G201 is located on the east side of the second story landing and is designated by the numbers 201 on the door. The door is white with a swinging screen door on the outside of the main door of, to the residence. C's, if located, evidence of the above listed crimes, including blood or other bodily fluid or human tissue or skin cells or items with blood or other bodily fluid or human tissue or skin cells on the items. Knives, sheaths, or sharp tools, including any dagger, dirk, or sword, and any written indicia of ownership of same, including sales receipts. Any images, whether digital or on paper, or any other format, which show Ethan Chapin, Kaylee Gonzalez, Zana Cornodo, Madison Mogan, Road in Bethany, and or Dylan, and or the house at 1122 King Road, Moscow, Idaho, and or the surrounding neighborhood. Clothing, including but not limited to dark shirt, dark pants, Mask, shoes with diamond pattern sole. Trace evidence including DNA from blood or skin cells or other source. Footprints, fingerprints, hair, whether human or animal, dog. Data compilations, whether digital, electronic, or on paper or other format, showing an interest in or planning of murder, violent assault, stabbing, and or cutting of people. And data compilations showing details of the 1122 King Road house, its location, and or any information about Ethan Chapin, Kaylee Gonzalez, Zana Cornoto, Madison Mogan, in Bethany and or Dylan. And data compilation shown the location of Brian Koberger or the cell phone with number 509-592-8458 on November 13th, 2022, including Wi-Fi logs and data or metadata associated with photos, social media posts, or applications on cell phones or computer towers, laptops, tablets. As example, but not intended to be an exclusive list of data compilations being sought, ledgers, papers, lists, Books, notes, letters, calendars, address books, contact lists, diaries, tapes, photographs, videos, emails, text messages, social media posts, messages, and metadata associated therewith. Electronic, digital devices, or digital storage devices which may contain any of the above data compilations, including cell phones, computer towers, laptops, tablets, external hard drives, CD, DVD, thumb drive, or other data storage devices. This includes any device which may contain... Evidence of other accounts associated with this device, including email addresses, social media accounts, messaging app accounts, and other accounts that may be accessed through the digital device that will aid in determining the possessor user of the device. Photographs, images, videos, documents, and related data created, accessed, read, modified, received, stored, sent, moved, deleted, or otherwise manipulated between the above dates. Evidence of use of the device to conduct internet searches relating to a review of other murders or violent assaults, stabbing, and or cutting of people, as well as how to avoid detection after the commission of such crimes, details of the 1122 King Road house, its location, neighborhood, and or information about one or, one or more of the victims. Ethan Chapin, Kaylee Gonzalez, Zana Cornoto, Madison Mogan, Bethany, and or Dylan. Information that can be used to calculate the position of the device between the above dates, including location data, GPS satellite data, GPS coordinates for routes and destination queries between the above listed dates. App data or usage information and related location information, IP logs or similar internet connection information, and images created, accessed, or modified between the above listed dates, together with their metadata and EXIF tags. Evidence of the identity of the person in possession of the device on or about any times that items of evidentiary value located pursuant to this warrant were created, modified, accessed, or otherwise manipulated. Such evidence may be found in digital communications, photos, and video and associated metadata, IP logs, documents, and social media activity and similar data. Also, passwords, phrases, codes, patterns, fingerprints, and or usernames to operate any such device. Indicia of residence in or ownership of possession of the premises and any of the above items, including mail, receipts, identification, bills, rental agreements, licensing documents, and other personal property whose owner, possessor, may be readily determined. Assistance from any law enforcement agencies from the state of Idaho or the federal government or any technical specialist associated with or employed by or contacted with such law enforcement agencies, including but not limited to the Moscow Police Department, 
Idaho State Police, FBI, Idaho State Police Forensic Services is authorized. Assistance from a technical specialist is also authorized to review any digital devices and digital media for the best and the least intrusive method for securing digital evidence that the warrant authorizes for seizure and to assist in securing such evidence. Promptly return this warrant to me or, or the clerk of this court. The return must include an inventory of all property seized. A copy of the warrant and receipt for the property taken shall be given to the person from whom or from whose premises property is taken. If no person is found in possession, a copy and receipt shall be conspicuously posted at the place where the property is found. I, Don Daniels, Assistant Chief WSU Police Department, declare that I have personal knowledge of the matters herein and or am relying on witness statements. Information provided by my fellow officers, including fellow officers from the state of Idaho, reports, and other material I have gathered in my investigation, and that I am competent to testify to the matters stated herein. On the basis of the following, I believe there is probable cause that Brian Koberger has committed the crime of murder, first degree, Idaho Code, in Moscow, Idaho, and that evidence of those crimes, weapons, or other things by means of which a crime has been committed or reasonably appears about to be committed. So those are the two that he has checked is located in, on, at, or about the following described premises, vehicle, or person. Apartment located at 1630 Northeast Valley Road, number G201, Pullman, Washington. 1630 Northeast Valley Road is a three-story multiple occupancy apartment building in Pullman, Washington, which is a tan and white in color. Apartment G201 is located on the northeast corner of the second story of this building. The door to G201 is located on the east side of the second story landing and is designated by the numbers 201 on the door. The door is white with a swinging screen door on the outside of the main door to the residence. Affiant, I am a police officer at Washington State University Police Department and have been so employed since July 20th, 1998. I attended and successfully completed the 440 hour Washington State Criminal Justice Training Commission's Basic Law Enforcement Academy. While at the academy, I completed courses in criminal law, criminal procedures, and other investigative courses. Since the academy, I have continued my education in various law enforcement related fields, including officer involved shooting evidence collection, and threat assessment. I have investigated and assisted in the service of over 50 search warrants. Persons providing information. Moscow, Idaho, Police Officer Sergeant Dustin Blaker. Sergeant Blaker's sworn statement is attached hereto as Exhibit A and is hereby incorporated in this application for search warrant. Sergeant Blaker identifies his experience and training in his statement. Other officers and witnesses are identified in Sergeant Blaker's sworn statement. The investigation. I was contacted by Moscow police officers and asked to assist their investigation into the recent murder of four people in Moscow, Idaho. Sergeant Blaker of the Moscow Police Department has developed probable cause to believe that a resident of Whitman County, Brian Koberger, committed the murders in burglary. I agree with Sergeant Blaker's statement that there is probable cause to believe that Koberger committed the murders in burglary and that there is probable cause to believe that evidence of those crimes will be located in Koberger's apartment at 1630 Northeast Valley Road, number G201 in Pullman. I'm seeking this search warrant to search that apartment. The probable cause is described in detail in the attached Exhibit A, sworn statement of Sergeant Blaker, which is hereby incorporated herein by this reference, just as if fully set forth here. Based on all the foregoing information, I believe that evidence of the above listed crime exists at the above described location and that there is a probable cause to search that location for evidence of the above listed crimes, including blood or other bodily fluids or human tissue or skin cells, or items with blood or other bodily fluid or human tissue or skin cells on the items, knives, sheaths, or other sharp tools, including any dagger, dirk, or sword, and any written indicia of ownership of same, including sales receipts, any images, whether digital or on paper, or any other format which show Ethan Chapin, Kaylee Gonzalez, Diana Cornoto, Madison Mogan, Bethany, and or Dylan, and or the house of 1122 King Road, Moscow, Idaho, and or the surrounding neighborhood. Clothing including but not limited to dark shirt, dark pants, mask, shoes with diamond pattern sole. Trace evidence including DNA from blood or skin cells or other source, footprints, fingerprints, hair, whether human or animal, dog. Data compilations whether digital, electronic, or on paper or other format. Showing an interest in or planning of murder, violent assault, stabbing, and or cutting of people and data compilations showing details of the 1122 King Road house, its location, and or any information about Ethan, Kaylee, Zanna, Madison, Bethany, and or Dylan. And data compilations showing the location of Brian Koberger or the cell phone with number 509-592-8458.
on November 13th, 2022, including Wi-Fi log and data or metadata associated with photos, so social media posts, or applications on cell phones or computer towers, laptops, tablets. As example, but not intended to be an exclusive list of data compilations being sought. Ledgers, papers, lists, books, notes, letters, calendars, address books, contact lists, diaries, tapes, photographs, videos, emails, text messages, social media posts, messages, and metadata associated therewith. Electronic, digital devices, or digital storage devices which may contain any of the above data compilations, including cell phones, computer towers, laptops, tablets, external hard drives, CD, DVD, thumb drive, or other data storage devices. This includes any device which may contain evidence of other accounts associated with this device, including email addresses, social media accounts, messaging app accounts, and other accounts that may be accessed through the digital device that will aid in determining the possessor or user of the device. Photographs, images, videos, documents, and related data created, accessed, read, modified, received, stored, sent, moved, deleted, or otherwise manipulated between the above dates. Evidence of use of the device to conduct internet searches relating to a review of other murders or violent assaults, stabbing, and or cutting of people, as well as how to avoid detection after the commission of such crimes. Details of the 1122 King Road House, its location, neighborhood, and or information about one or more of the victims, Ethan, Kaylee, Zanna, Madison, Bethany, and or Dylan. Information that can be used to calculate the position of the device between the above dates, including location data, GPS satellite data, GPS coordinates for routes and destination queries between the above listed dates, app data or usage information and related location information, IP logs or similar internet connection information, and images created, accessed, or modified between the above listed dates, together with their metadata and EXIF tags. I don't even know how to pronounce that if you just do EXIF tags. Evidence of the identity of the person in possession of the device on or about any times the items of evidentiary value located pursuant to this warrant were created, modified, accessed, or otherwise manipulated. Such evidence may be found in digital communications, photos, and video and associated metadata, IP logs, documents, social media activity, and similar data. Also passwords, phrases, codes, patterns, fingerprints, and or usernames to operate any such device. Indicia of residence in or ownership of possession, indicia of residence in, or ownership or possession of, the premises, and any of the above items, including mail, receipts, identification, bills, rental agreements, licensing documents, and other personal property whose owner, possessor, may be readily determined. In addition, I am asking the court to authorize in the service of the search warrant the use of the assistance from any law enforcement agencies from the state of Idaho or the federal government or any technical specialist associated with or employed by or contacted with such law enforcement agencies, including but not limited to the Moscow Police Department, Idaho State Police, FBI, and Idaho State Police Forensic Services. I am also asking for authorization of assistance from a technical specialist to review any digital devices and digital media for the best and least intrusive method of securing digital evidence that the warrant authorizes for seizure and to assist in securing such evidence. Supplemental Disclosure Re-DNA Test I have been informed by Detective J.R. Talbot of the Idaho State Police that on November 13th, 2022, a sheath was recovered at the King Road residence under or next to the body of Madison Mogan. The Idaho State Crime Lab obtained a male DNA profile, suspect profile, from the sheath. This is also referred to in Sergeant Blaker's sworn statement, Exhibit A. On December 27th, 2022, law enforcement agents, officers in Pennsylvania recovered trash that originated from the Coburgers family residence. That trash was sent to the Idaho State Crime Lab for testing. On December 28th, the Idaho State Lab reported that a DNA profile was obtained from the trash. It was compared to the suspect DNA profile. The lab personnel concluded that the source of the trash DNA profile was a male and was not being excluded as the biological father of the source of the suspect profile. At least 99.99998% of the male population would be expected to be excluded from the possibility of being the biological father of the source of the suspect profile. This information is being provided to the court pursuant to my duty and obligation to be fully candid with the court. I do not believe this information is exculpatory for the suspect. However, if the court believes it is exculpatory, then the court should consider the supplemental disclosure and its evaluation of the existence of probable cause or lack thereof. 
but I'm specifically asking that the court to not consider this supplemental disclosure as evidence supporting the existence of probable cause. The reason for this request is that if the DNA test results are held inadmissible at some point, such a ruling would not impact the finding of the probable cause for this warrant. So long as this court is satisfied as to the probable cause, regardless of the DNA test result, I certify under penalty of perjury under the laws of the state of Washington that the foregoing is true and correct. Signed this 29th day of December, 2022. So the next part is actually the arrest affidavit that was already out and we already read through it, but it's the full one. So it's like basically unredacted, like all the stuff that they didn't have in the original. They included it in this. And this still could be possibly redacted to a degree or more so that they just don't have it's not like the whole discovery you know what i'm saying they don't have everything that they built their case on in this i'm sure but it does have more so i compared the original affidavit that came out compared to what they have in this document and i'm going to read you this stuff that's different okay now there's a few things in the original that isn't in this one for some reason. I mean that there's like, okay, a couple extra sentences in in some of the paragraphs. Actually, in the original that isn't in this document, I'm not going to read those because this document I'm reading you here is a more complete version, but I am going to read you the stuff that basically wasn't in the original affidavit or that they redacted that's in this document, okay? So it starts right here. So up until here, this is all in the original up until page 19, and here is what they redacted, okay? So the King Road residence contained a significant amount of blood from the victims, including spatter and cast off, blood stain pattern resulting from blood drops released from an object due to its motion, which, based on my training, makes it likely that this evidence was transferred to Koberger's person, clothing, or shoes. Based on the locations of the suspect vehicle and the 8458 phone immediately following the murders, it is probable that Koberger went home to his residence at 1630 Northeast Valley Road, G201. At that time, it is likely that he still had blood or other trace evidence on his person, clothes, shoes, including skin cells or hair from the victims or from Gonzalez's dog. It is likely that some trace evidence was transferred to areas in his apartment through contact with the items worn during the attack. One likely location for the clothes, mask, shoes that he was wearing during the attack would be his residence. While I believe Koberger is visiting family in Pennsylvania over the current school break at WSU, I believe he intends to return for the start of the next semester, so I expect his belongings to still be in his residence at 1630 Northeast Valley Road, G201. To date, we have not recovered the weapon used in the homicides, which would indicate that he took it with him from the scene. Based on my training, that weapon will likely contain trace evidence on it, such as blood or skin or hair from the crime scene. One likely location for the weapon or any sheath for the weapon would be his residence. But he left the sheath at the house. I'm confused. It wouldn't be the sheath for that weapon because the sheath was laying next to Maddie though. Huh. Anyway, based on my training and experience, when someone plans an event or action, one likely location for doing so is in their residence or office. One would not want to conduct such planning in public if they're planning a criminal act. And so it is even more likely that planning of a criminal act would be done in one's residence or office. These murders appear to have been planned rather than a crime that happened in a moment of conflict. I believe it likely that Koberger planned his actions ahead of time. The plans may have included a review of other murders or violent assaults, stabbing and or cutting of people, as well as how to avoid detection after the commission of such crimes. Details of the 1122 King Road residence, its location, neighborhood, and or information about one or more of the victims, Ethan Chapin, Kaylee, Zanna, Madison, Bethany, and or Dylan. Further based on my training and experience, criminals utilize electronic digital devices as well as paper or other media in conducting planning of crimes. Just as non-criminals use various media to plan activities, therefore is probable cause to believe that digital devices were used and or are being used in furtherance of the listed crimes or to avoid detection for the listed crimes and likely contain evidence of the listed crimes. Evidence of the crimes described in this application could be contained in any type of digital device. The terms digital device and device include all devices capable of capturing and or storing digital data, such as computers, digital cameras, modems, routers, external memory drives, thumb drives, cellular telephones, GPS navigation devices, etc. Data stored on digital devices and media can be easily transferred from one device or storage media to another. Forensic experts and others with experience in retrieving and analyzing digital data have established the following. 
Digital devices typically retain some evidence of all activity taken via the device or associated media, and as such could contain evidence of a crime. For example, data, whether stored intentionally or unintentionally, can contain evidence of knowledge, intent, efforts to conceal, sell or dispose of evidence or proceeds of criminal activity, accomplice identity, association with victims, or geographic location of the device possessor at particular dates and times. This information can be in numerous forms, such as photographs, address books, or contact lists, or communications with others through means such as phone calls, email, instant messaging, social media, chat sessions, or digital communications. Evidence can remain on the device or media for indefinite periods of time after the communication originally took place, even if deleted by the user. Information deleted by the user may be recovered by a forensic examiner throughout the working lifespan of the device. Digital data can be found in numerous locations and formats. Evidence can be embedded into unlikely files for the type of evidence, such as a photo included in a document or converted into a PDF file or other format in an effort to conceal their existence. Information on devices and media can be stored in random order with deceptive file names, hidden from normal view, encrypted or password protected, and stored on unusual devices for the type of data such as routers, printers, scanners, game consoles, or other devices that are similarly capable of storing digital data. Wholly apart from user-generated files and data, digital devices and media typically store, often without any conscious action by the user, electronic evidence pertaining to virtually all actions taken on the digital device, and often information about the geographic location at which the device was turned on and or used. This data includes logs of device use, records of the creation, modification, deletion, and or sending of files, and uses of the internet, such as uses of social media websites and internet searches browsing. Device-generated data also includes information regarding the user identity at any particular date and time, usage logs, and information pertaining to the physical location of the device over time, pointers to outside storage locations, such as cloud storage, or devices to which data may have been removed and information about how that off-site storage is being used. If the device is synced with other devices, it will retain a record of that action. Digital device users typically do not erase or delete this evidence because special software or use of special settings are usually required for the task. However, it is technically possible to delete this information. Digital device can also reveal clues to other locations at which evidence may be found. For example, digital devices often maintain logs of connected digital or remote storage devices. A scanner or printer may store information that would identify the digital device with which it was used. Forensic examination of the device can often reveal those other locations where evidence may be present. As with other types of evidence, the context, location, and data surrounding information in the device data is often necessary to understand whether evidence falls within the scope of the warrant. This type of information will be important to the forensic examiner's ability to piece together and recognize evidence of the above listed crimes. Digital device programs frequently require passwords, phrases, codes, patterns, fingerprints, and or usernames to operate. These may be kept inside a device media or outside in some other area known to the user. So, in addition to searching a digital device and media for evidence of the above listed crime, investigators will need to search both the premises searched and the digital device for this information. The forensic examiner may also need the following items in order to conduct a thorough and accurate search of the devices. Computer hardware, software, peripherals, internal or external storage devices, power supplies, cables, internet connection and use information, security devices, software, manuals, and related material. Modern digital devices and media can contain many gigabytes and even terabytes of data. Due to the potential for an extremely large volume of data contained in devices and media, in that fact that evidence can be stored, located in unanticipated locations or formats and or embedded in other items stored on the device media, investigators typically need to use specialized equipment in their search. Such large volumes of data also mean that searches can take days or even weeks to complete. For these reasons, I request authority to remove from search location all digital devices and media that could contain evidence authorized for seizure under the warrant for subsequent search. I also request authority to obtain assistance from a technical specialist to review the digital device and digital media for the best and least intrusive method of securing digital evidence that this warrant authorizes for seizure and to assist in securing such evidence. Based on all the foregoing information, there is probable cause to believe that evidence of the above listed crimes exist in the below described digital devices 
and that there is probable cause to seize and search those devices for the evidence of the above crimes for the date range, August 21st, 2022, to 11.59 p.m. on November 14th, 2022. So that's what, three months before they're thinking he's, he was possible planning this? Evidence of other accounts associated with this device, including email addresses, social media accounts, messaging app accounts, and other accounts that may be accessed through the digital device that will aid in determining the possessor user of the device. Photographs, images, videos, documents, and related data created, accessed, read, modified, received, stored, sent, moved, deleted, or otherwise manipulated between the above dates. Evidence of the use of the device to conduct internet searches relating to a review of other murders or violent assaults, stabbing, and or cutting of people, as well as how to avoid detection after the commission of such crimes. Details of the 1122 King Road house, its location, neighborhood, and or information about one or more of the victims, Ethan, Kaylee, Zanna, Madison, Bethany, and or Dylan. Information that can be used to calculate the position of the device between the above dates, including location data, GPS satellite data, GPS coordinates for routes and destination queries between the above listed dates, app data or usage information and related location information, IP logs or similar internet connection information, and images created, accessed, or modified between the above listed dates, together with their metadata and exit tags. Evidence of the identity of the person in possession of the device on or about any times that items of evidentiary value located pursuant to this warrant were created, modified, accessed, or otherwise manipulated. Such evidence may be found in digital communications, photos and video associated with metadata, IP logs, documents, social media activity, and similar data. Based on ISP investigators' view of the apartment on December 27, 2022, I know that 1630 Northeast Valley Road is a three-story, multiple occupancy apartment building in Pullman, Washington, which is tan and white in color. Apartment G201 is located on the northeast corner of the second story of this building, the door to G201 is located on the east side of the second story landing and is designated by the numbers 201 on the door. The door is white with a swinging screen door on the outside of the main door to the residence. Koberger has been identified as the occupant of this apartment on leasing documents obtained via subpoena as part of this investigation. Investigators have been informed via the postal inspector that Koberger is the only person receiving mail at apartment G201. This leads investigators to believe he is the sole occupant. Based on all of the above information, I conclude that there is a probability that Koberger committed the four murders at the King Road residence. I have probable cause to believe evidence of the crimes committed at the King Road residence will be found at the Koberger's residence located at 1630 Northeast Valley Road, apartment G201, Pullman, Washington. I have probable cause to believe that Brian Koberger committed the crimes of murder, first degree, code, Idaho code, blah, 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 and four counts in burglary, all felonies. Mr. Koberger has been charged with the above offenses in Lata County, Idaho. Based on all of the above information, I am seeking a search warrant for the Koberger residents to search for blood or other bodily fluid or human tissue or skin cells or items with blood or other bodily fluid or human tissue or skin cells on the items, knives, sheaths, or other sharp tools, including any dagger, dirk, or sword, and any written indicia of ownership of same, including sales receipts, any images, whether digital or on paper, or any other format, which show Ethan, Sienna, Madison, Bethany, and or Dylan, and or the house of 1122 King Road, Moscow, Idaho, and or the surrounding neighborhood. Clothing including, but not limited to dark shirt, dark pants, mask, shoes with diamond pattern sole. Trace evidence including DNA from blood or skin cells or other source. Footprints, fingerprints, hair, whether human or animal, dog. Data compilations, whether digital, electronic, or on paper or other format. Showing an interest in or planning of murder, violent assault, stabbing and or cutting of people. And data compilations showing details of the 1122 King Road House. Its location and or any information about Ethan, Kaylee, Zanna, Madison, Bethany, and or Dylan. And data compilations showing the locations of Brian Koberger or the cell phone with number 509-592-8458 on November 13th, 2022. Sorry, I'm reading this fast because this is like repeat stuff that is in all the, uh, the documents that we just read. Okay, I'm going to read that last sentence again because it continues on the next page. And data compilations showing the location of Brian Koberger or the cell phone with number 509-592-8458 on November 13th, 2022 including Wi-Fi logs and data or metadata associated with photos, social media posts, or applications on cell phones or computer towers, laptops, tablets. As an example, but not intended to be an exclusive list of data compilations being sought, ledgers, papers, lists, books, 
notes, letters, calendars, address books, contact lists, diaries, tapes, photographs, videos, emails, text messages, social media posts, messages, and metadata associated with therewith. Electronic digital devices or digital storage devices, which may contain any of the above data compilations, including cell phones, computer towers, laptops, tablets, external hard drives, CD, DVD, thumb drive, or other data storage devices. This includes any device which may contain evidence of other accounts associated with the device, including email addresses, social media accounts, messaging app accounts, and other accounts that may be accessed through the digital device that will aid in determining the possessor's user of the device. Photographs, images, videos, documents, and related data created, accessed, read, modified, received, stored, sent, moved, deleted, or otherwise manipulated between the above dates. Evidence of the use of the device to conduct internet searches relating to a review of other murders or violent assaults, stabbing, and or cutting of people, as well as how to avoid it, detection after the commission of such crimes, details of the 1122 Road House, its location, neighborhood, and or information about one or more of the victims, information that can be used to calculate the position of the device between the above dates, including location data, GPS satellite data, GPS coordinates for routes, and destination queries between the above listed dates, app data or usage information and related location information, IP logs or similar internet connection information, and images created, accessed, or modified between the above listed dates, together with their metadata and exif tags. Evidence of the identity of the person in possession of the device on or about any times that items of evidentiary value located pursuant to this warrant were created, modified, accessed, or otherwise manipulated. Such evidence may be found in digital communications, photos and video, and associated metadata, IP logs, documents, social media activity, and similar data. Also passwords, phrases, codes, patterns, fingerprints, and or usernames to operate any such device. Indicia of residence in or ownership of or possession of the premises in any of the above items. I am seeking a search warrant for Koberger's office at WSU to search for any images, whether digital or on paper, or any other format which show Ethan Cayley, Zanna Madison, Bethany and or Dylan, and or the house at 1122 King Road, Moscow, Idaho, and or the surrounding neighborhood. Data compilations, whether digital, electronic, or on paper, or other format, showing an interest in, or planning of, murder, violent assault, stabbing, and or cutting of people. And data compilations showing details of the 1122 King Road house, its location, and or information about Ethan, Kaylee, Zanna, Madison, Bethany, and or Dylan. And the data compilations showing the location of Brian Koberger, or the cell phone with the number 509-592-8458 on November 13th, 2022, including Wi-Fi logs and data or metadata associated with photos, social media posts, or applications on cell phones or computer towers, laptops, tablets. As example, but not intended to be an exclusive list of data compilations being sought. Ledgers, papers, lists, books, notes, letters, calendars, address, books, contacts, lists. You know, I'm not going to go through. This is all the same stuff they're basically looking for at his office. Okay. So all that stuff they're going to, they same stuff they're going to try to find in his office that they have a warrant for in his office, I should say. So I'm going to skip that. Okay. So right here, based off the above information, I am also seeking a search warrant for Koberger's office on the Washington State University campus. I have probable cause to believe that evidence of the crimes committed at the King Road residence will be found in Koberger's office located on the WSU campus on Wilson Short Hall, number 12, Pullman, Washington. It is common for individuals to keep documents, records, and information of the type described above in their office in Koberger's office is the other location identified where this evidence could be found. Based off the WSU website, Koberger's office is inside Wilson Short Hall. The address of Wilson Short Hall is 1475 Glen Terrell Mall, Pullman, Washington, 99163. Wilson Short Hall is a four-story brick building housing multiple offices. Koberger's office is number 12. Number 12 is a student office shared by Koberger and two fellow WSU students, Kai Zwan Chen and Nayang Ko. Koberger has been confirmed to be one of the students who utilizes this office. On December 29, 2022, investigators visited the office in Koberger's name in on the outside. Based off the above information, I am also seeking a search warrant for Koberger's office on the Washington State University campus. It is common for individuals to keep documents, records, and information of the type described above in their office. And Koberger's office is the other location identified where this evidence can be found. Okay, so let's see. Here we go now. Gonna tell us what they seized. So all seized from residents and currently stored at WSU PD. So we have one nitrite tight black glove, one Walmart receipt with one Dickies tag, two Marshalls receipts, dust container from Bissell Power Force Vacuum, eight possible hair strands, one fire TV stick with cord plug, one possible animal hair strand, 
one possible hair, one possible hair, one possible hair, one possible hair strand, one computer tower, one collection of dark red spot collected without testing, two cuttings from uncased pillow of reddish brown stain, larger stain tested, two top and bottom of mattress cover packaged separately, both labeled C, multiple stains, one tested, And that's it, guys. All right. Have a good night, everybody, or good day, or I'm not even sure by the time I edit this if this is going to come out in the day, night. Plus, everybody's in different time zones, so wherever you're at, good morning, good day, good evening, good night. Bye. I'm begging you to be kind. I'm begging you to be kind. I'm begging you to be kind